you are thinking of going into clinical social work, you may be super, super overwhelmed. I've been there. It is the highest licensure you can have as a social worker. So this video needs to be made because you need to get there. Grab your notebooks, follow along, and be sure you're asking all the questions in this video. I really want the comment section here to be just full of like other extensions. We could do a whole series on this. You may even wanna save this to a playlist somewhere because it's gonna be loaded with a lot of clinical information. These are things that I've gone through myself and as a board certified supervisor here in Texas, um, it's a lot. So I'm gonna assume that you are a LMSW right now, which is a licensed master's social worker. And of course I am in Texas, maybe not of course, you may not have known that, but I am in Texas and we all need to start with the LMSW. And getting the LMSW, if you don't have it yet, what you need to do is go to a master's level program that is accredited. And my, my reason for bringing this up is if you were in another field, which I'm guessing you are, and real quick right now, please let me know what field you are in. DM me over on social media, on, on Instagram, or just drop it in the comments below. What field are you in? If you're new here to Social Work Scrapbook, you may not know that I am a school social worker. And we're gonna talk a little bit in a second on how you can use your current field right now, the population you're working with right now, to get your clinical hours. Okay, so that's exciting, especially for the school social workers out there that are not sure, like, do they have to get a part-time? Do they have to do something else to get the clinical hours? Not always, but we'll talk about it. We'll get into it. <clears throat> so going back, we all got our MSWs. That means we have a general view of what social work is, right? That was all fed to us, given to us at our program through its curriculum. However, in the second year, as we got a little more refined, some of us had to choose whether we wanted to go the clinical route, which was myself, maybe you did that as well, and others might have chosen more of the macro, the community route. If you chose the macro community route, it's not too late. So I wanna talk a little bit about how to get on track to a clinical license. There may be several reasons why, and I, I really encourage you to stop and consider that why, because the journey is gonna be rather lengthy. These are the requirements right here, and you don't do this without having a really solid why. It might be to open up new career aspirations, make more money, that's what you might be going for, and that's all good and dandy, but you also need to make sure that the clinical role is something you are wanting to do for a deeper purpose. So I talked about the clinical role and that's broken down into these things. If you didn't go the clinical route, you may not know this might sound foreign and I'm gonna break them down even further. So the first part in diving into this whole process, the hours, the supervision, everything else, is making sure you have a job that is gonna fit the three, the big three, the assessment, diagnosis, and treatment planning into that job role. I shared a little bit earlier on how school social work can possibly work with you, and I'm gonna share more on how and why, but basics are assessment, diagnosis, and then treatment planning. Essentially, we're gonna put this all together and do this in front of a client over and over and over again. Clinical social workers are in charge of first assessing what the problem is for our clients. And this is something that happens throughout treatment with this client. We're collecting information, drawing conclusions, and we do this using different psychological tests, our own observations, clinical interviews, and then bringing all those together to assist the client and see if there is a possible diagnosis. So clinical diagnosis is the process of using all the assessment data that we've gathered in previously and concurrently to determine if the pattern of symptoms that we see in a client are consistent with any diagnostic criteria. And we mainly use the DSM, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders. And then finally, using our assessment and the diagnosis, we create treatment plans. The treatment phase is a collaborative based approach and it relies a lot on the relationship between the individual and the clinical social worker. 
So after we have the role, the job, right, that's gonna allow us to do the fun stuff, the assessment, treatment planning, diagnosis, a little out of order there, it's okay. But once you have a place that you can practice that, and if, if you really couldn't fit this into your role, um, as a board, so, bro, blah, as a board certified supervisor in Texas, I have helped some of my supervisees also find extensions of their role. Some take on part-time roles. You can think of telehealth as a way to get that done as well. Working at a mental health facility or volunteering sometimes within the prison system can help to get you those hours. The third thing, I don't know what number I'm on, but the next thing, the most important thing in Texas is to make sure you have a board certified supervisor in texas they need to be board certified if you're doing supervision with a social worker that doesn't have this certification in the state then those supervision hours will not count right and it's a lot of hours it's two years essentially so you want to make sure you are doing them with someone that you mesh with someone that is going to be challenging you and pushing you and someone that you feel you can be transparent around so i want to break this down a little further a real quick little cheat sheet here on how to choose a supervisor there's lots of things to keep in mind i'm going to place just a few questions to get you started so the first is what is your licensure and how long have you been a practicing clinician here we want to know what their experience is but we also want to know if they are board certified you can look this up and confirm it online and if you have questions about it then i would definitely ask you may want to know how many other supervisees or other people they've provided clinical supervision for also can they explain to you the full start to finish process for licensure what are the requirements for paperwork what about continuing education what are the work and supervision hours requirements and what are the minimum and maximum time frames you want to make sure that your supervisor is up to date with any changes that may be happening in your state. Also, what is your area of expertise? What types of theoretical orientations do you practice from? What types of modalities do you find yourself typically using with your clients and why? Also, how do you view your role as a clinical supervisor? What expectations do you have of your supervisees? And lastly, you want to know what their availability looks like in regards to the supervision sessions, but also support during any crisis that may come up outside of supervision hours and you may be wondering how and when am I gonna ask all these questions if it's a really great supervisor they want to do a little introductory um, a discovery call if you will to ensure that you are a good fit right you want to make sure that your personalities mesh you're gonna spend two years with this person four hours a month with this person uh, delving deep into how to hold space your own stuff that might come up you know it is a lot of use of self when you're doing clinical social work and that's going to take a little bit of learning on on your own triggers your own deep, dark things that might be coming up in transference, counter transfers, just so much stuff. Make sure that you have someone you trust and someone that is also creating a space of vulnerability, right? That means your supervisor is getting vulnerable as well and sharing some examples and um, you feel comfortable to share what's happening in your sessions with your clients. You're going to make mistakes. That's what supervision is for, is to make those mistakes or get stuck. And then you have your supervisor to kind of bounce ideas off of and to lean on to kind of get back on the right track and start building these clinical skills, right? It's all a work in progress. So you really want to make sure that both of you really get along and mesh well, because it is, it is a whole journey and you want to, to like each other throughout that journey. That's a real quick kind of rundown of how to transition from another area of social work into clinical social work. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I am going to put another video here on the screen. This one's a little older, but it's my techniques for those that are just starting into the clinical social work field, maybe trying to understand if it truly is for you and just wanting some more in-depth guidance. Please watch this next. Until next time, I'm wishing you social work success. Bye guys.